Hello everybody, welcome to number 27, I'm Jack. Now just imagine that you are the middle of the middle one of three brothers. Your youngest brother is an incredibly successful footballer. Your elder brother is an absolutely incredibly accomplished brain surgeon. And you are a pretty successful accountant. That kind of explains the situation that the E36 M3 found itself in when it was launched and still to a degree today. Although commercially very successful, it wasn't really that warmly received by the enthusiasts and the motoring press. So much so that at the time it was threatening to damage the M division's burgeoning reputation. Now don't forget it is the 80s and the early 90s where M really started to grow into the behemoth that it is today. And this car initially really threatened that. But as we shall see, there was a dramatic intervention that really changed things. Thank you to Bidding Classics for sponsoring today's video. Check out this online auction for classic cars with no buyer's fees. The E30 was born as a homologation special for Group A regulations. With that gone, it kind of gave BMW the green light to develop this one in a rather different way. This, instead of trying to get around regulations, building a car to FIA specs, it was really designed more by committee in the boardroom. That is never going to be quite as exciting. Unsurprisingly then, the E36, when it was first launched, turned out to be heavier, less sharp, more luxurious, more refined, and, well, a bit more boring. In actual fact, you can't blame BMW because it sold three times the numbers of the E30 M3, so it was a success. I think people did want something that was more usable. But as I said, BMW couldn't allow M Division's reputation to be tarnished by a car which didn't quite excite enough. Enter what we in the UK called the Evo version and which in Europe was simply known as the facelifted version. Now they look almost identical but beneath the skin there are some huge huge changes that mean that this was able to bring back M to what it was supposed to be. So this one is a later car, it is an Evo. Let's take it out and I'm gonna tell you exactly how BMW managed to save the M3 with this car and also how it drives from today's viewpoint. Now, before we go any further, let me make something clear. The original standard M3, the E36, was by no means a bad car. It's just that it suffered really in comparison to the previous and the later M cars in terms of focus. It was a great car, but it was, it just wasn't quite special enough. For somebody like me actually, who doesn't tend to drive cars at 10 tenths, as a classic proposition, it might even be a better car than the Evo, although to be fair, with this, with the Evo, you gain a lot and there aren't really, there isn't much that you miss out on by having it. Possibly slightly less comfortable in terms of suspension, but then this isn't that bad anyway. So the major differences and the way that BMW transformed this, and I remember when I was younger, reading the reviews when the Evo was released and Journalists really said that it felt like a very, very different car to the basic M3. That is because, although they look very similar, BMW pretty much went to town in terms of the changes that, that they undertook. Nothing really escaped its attention, starting with the engine, which had graphite-coated con rods, it had bigger valves, it had lighter pistons, it had a higher compression ratio, so power went up from 280 to 320 horsepower different management system as well by Siemens. The chassis was thoroughly reworked. So suspension wise, stiffer damping, stiffer shocks, slightly different anti-roll bar arrangement at the front. I think different hubs as well. Uh, and even different geometry to make it slightly less tail happy. The gearbox went up to six speeds and this car gained a quicker rack. Mm. 
So the designation for this was, I think the original car had a B30 was the engine. This has a B32. And it is a fine, fine example of a straight six. What a car. In third gear, it just keeps on and on, pulling and pulling. Gary, who owns this, was telling me, just put it in third, rev it all the way, and it just keeps on going. It really does. I mean, the gear ratios actually are quite long. Uh, and when it got the six-speeder here, it was, um, it was more, six was more an overdrive, to be honest, I think for noise or emissions regs. I don't know why they did it. But um, so not massive difference compared to the other five-speed in terms of the closeness of the ratios. But the steering, the quicker rack made a massive difference. And this really is a very good car, very good fun to sort of throw about. Perhaps in typical BMW fashion, one of the things I've always found is that the weighing is always a little bit off. I find it a little bit over light and it's not absolutely brimming with feel. You have enough feel so you know what the front end is doing, but it's not one of the all-time great steering systems, but big improvement on the previous car for sure. Makes it feel a little bit more chuckable, a little bit more agile. The gear change is typical BMW of this era. Absolutely love it. It's slightly longer than you think it should be. So changing gear, it should be a little bit, you know, the movement, there should be a little bit less movement in there, I think. But the upshot of that is, is that it's very, very, it's light and crisp. Gary has really done a lot of work to this, so mechanically, it's a brilliant car. By the way, I mean, he's unsure whether he wants to sell or not, but he said he might consider it. I think he's looking for about 25,000. So these have really gone up in value. You used to be able to get them for <laughs> no money at all, but now they do command good premiums. But as I said, luckily, he's redone all the suspension on this. I mean, he's been all over this car, and you can tell it drives extremely well. The brakes, it feels tight. Oh, that is just lovely. Got really good feel from the back end as well. I could feel there it was, it was just giving me signals. It wasn't close, but that push it a bit further and it will start to move around. Great throttle response as well. Let's do another pull on it and just revel in this engine. So it revs all the way to seven and a half. And that last bit between five and a half and seven and a half, it really zings. It loves it. It loves it. Okay, this is one of those cars that makes me fall a little bit in love. And it's so chuckable. It's so, so good. It really is. It doesn't feel frankly, much less agile than my 306, which is absolutely saying something. Oh, the chassis is pliant enough that you can do these country roads. It pulls hard enough. It's got enough power. It's got good precision. It's small enough that you can place it on the road. This is an inordinate amount of fun. It's one of those that has really, really surprised me. The E46 is a bit better. It is a bit more capable. I think the body control is better on it, but, and they look even better than these, although I like these, but the E46, do you know what? It doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel quite as nimble and the steering has less feel than this. It just feels, I think it must be, is it smaller? It's definitely smaller. Is it lighter? I don't know, but it feels it. Very lovely, very nimble. Great car, really great car. Now looks wise, I went through a, a stage in the wilderness where I wasn't quite sure about these, but now they've really grown on me. BMW's M division has really become a behemoth in the last few years, and I think intrinsically linked with BMW's own success. It manages to lift the rest of the range. 
The modern cars really do nothing for me. They're too much like computer games, but this still analog. And okay, although the first M3 was maybe a bit of a miss, in terms of perceptions and what people, what the enthusiast thought about it, it was still a good car. I mean, ergonomics are great, they're well built. You know, they were still good cars, but this really, if they just left it at that, I think it would have been a bit of a, a sore point in M Division's history. The fact that they came out with the Evo, they addressed so many of the concerns and the issues. And this car, I can tell you, is absolutely brilliant. I'd love to have one, quite frankly. They're probably a bit too much money for me now. But if they were back at the old sort of rates, I would absolutely have love to have one of these. So I think we've got to the stage where the accountant has become so successful that it's got its own company. And uh, it's sort of taking over the world. Yes, an E30 feels a bit more special than this. And an E46 is ultimately more capable, but I think for most drivers, people like me who drive the cars maybe at up to 70 or 80% of their capabilities, this is easier to exploit than an E46. It feels a bit friendlier to me. It's, um, it's playful. I mean, it is great. Definitely feels more nimble than the later car. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Do take a look at the other videos. I've got some other quite interesting BMWs that I've done recently. Uh, I'll put the link up here. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Really look forward to seeing you for the next video.